Alright guys, so in this video, I'm going to actually show you how to program a Game Elf 751 Multicade PCB. Uh, so this is the Game Elf. There are very different versions out there, multiple versions actually. This happens to be the one that comes with the actual case. Uh, a lot of them just come with the circuit board, but this is a cased version. Just to kind of start out, it is a 56-pin JAMA connector. Um, there is something to note about this, though. Pin number 27 on both sides, the parts and the solder side, cannot be hooked up to a ground. All right? That is actually the fifth, or I mean the sixth, the sixth switch in the circuit. Switch F, I believe it is. Uh, so if you have the hook to ground, you could have potential problems with it booting up or just not working in general or just have problems with selecting games or playing games. Another thing to note is it doesn't require a negative 5. It's just positive 5 and positive 12. If you put a negative 5 on this, the game board will not boot. Alright, so we'll flip this over to this side. And you'll notice... There's a push button and a switch, okay? Now, that push button right there, I know it's not the best angle or whatnot, but that's known as switch one. What that means is if you don't have a test button wired up and you go to power the game up and you need to get into the test mode or the setup mode, you press that little button, and that's your switch one, all right? Next to it is a two-pin dip switch. We have a one and a two. This is how you set up the type of monitor you're using. So if you're using a flat screen or even a CRT with a VGA input, you want to have the number one on and the number two off. If you're using a CRT that's using a CGA input, you want to have the number two on and the number one off. That little black connector next to it, that's how you hook up a trackball. So any game on here that uses a trackball, uh, you would hook your trackball up to that. You don't have to have a trackball. The game is programmed like the 16 one where any trackball game can use a joystick. There's your VGA output. Alright, so if you're going to be using a flat screen uh, television or a CRT that takes CGA in, or VGA in and not CGA in, you're going to use this connector. Alright, if you're going to have a, a CGA out, you have to use the CGA outputs on the actual JAMA edge connector, all right? Next to that is a USB port. Now, this USB port is actually used for a PlayStation 2 controller. Yeah, that's right. You can actually set up a PS2 controller to play this game. So if you don't want to have a big, bulky arcade in your house, you can kind of just program this into a tiny little box or just plug a PS2 controller into it set that up in the programming, and then, boom, you're playing with a PS2 controller instead. Uh, that white connector, I actually have no idea what that's used for, unfortunately. So I'm sorry, this, it's not in the manual or any of that kind of stuff. That little spot that's bulging out, if you had this as just a regular open PCB, you'd see that that is the SD card. So that's basically the memory card that holds all the game data and all the parameters needed to run this system. Next to that is a headphone jack. Yep, you can plug headphones into this. So if you don't want to have the speakers running off the uh, JAMA Edge connector, you can actually plug in headphones and just make everything quiet. Next to that is a potentiometer for the volume. So you can actually adjust your volume directly from that little potentiometer right there. Uh, and that's important too because in the settings or the setup there is no volume adjustment so that's all you have is that right there. Next to that is a MOLC connector input and that's just an alternative way to power this board up. So if you don't want to run your positive 5 and your positive 12 and ground through this part of the edge connector you can actually run it through this connector right here. Alright, so that's the basic layout of this board. And yeah, that's it. So now we're going to go ahead and plug it in, power it up, and I'm going to show you how to go through the entire setup step by step. Alright, so stay tuned. We'll be right back, guys. Alright, now that you've seen uh, the layout of the circuit board, we're going to go ahead and power this board up now. 
and then show you how to get into the main test menu. There will be a prompt on the screen that says press test button to enter menu or something along those lines. But once you see the press test button uh, message come up, you just press the test button. It will flash by really quick, right there. Press test to go to setup. Takes a second to load. Okay, now it's all loaded up. I'm going to go ahead and turn the light off so you can see a little bit better. Alright, there we go. Uh, so, we have eight options. We have exit, we have the JAMA I.O. test, we have the cabinet type, we have the serial number, we got service, coin settings, the coin counter, and flip screen. Now, exit is obviously how you get out of the screen. Uh, the I.O. test determines if all your inputs are working, so like your joysticks and your push buttons. Your cabinet type is, well, like it says, it's your cabinet type, if it's an upright or a cocktail. Mine doesn't work for some reason. I might have it wired wrong, but every time I enter into the cabinet type, it actually uh, reboots the game. So I can't show you that one. Serial number, that's for the game board itself. So the dedicated serial number for the board will show up on there. Service is how you uh, set the game menu up so that you can go into a sub menu to adjust the actual uh, game list and the game difficulties. You can also change things like uh, the timers and whatnot on the service area. Uh, coin settings is how you change the settings for your coins and how set up free play. The coin counter is for when you have it on site or you're charging to play a game. You can see how many coins have been entered. And flipping the screen is to flip the screen. But let's start with the first one, JAMA I.O. You're going to press the one player start button to enter. And as you can see, we have all zeros across the board because none of the switches are being pressed right now. I only have a one player station set up. I don't have the test button or service button set up or any of that. So, when you see, like let's say up for the joystick... It changes from 0 to 1. That means the switch is activating and the game is registering it. So, going through the entire list of them, they are working great. So, we don't have to worry about that. All the inputs are working just right. Now, to get out of here, you're going to press the uh, A and B button at the same time to quit. There you go. Now, like I said, I can't show you the cabinet type. But you can, this is how you change it if you have an upright or an arcade you stand up at to play. Or if you have like a cocktail, which is like a tabletop style game. The serial number, again, pressing the start button will go into it. This shows you the serial number for the game board that you have. This one is my serial number. Now you just press the A button or the number one button to exit this. We're going to skip service for right now and we're going to go to coin settings. In coin settings, this is where you can actually change uh, all your setups for your coin inputs. Uh, using the C button, or the third button, is how you change uh, each different selection here. So the coin mode, if I press the C button, right now it's at one coin for one credit. It'll be one coin, two credits, and then it goes from three coins to one credit, two coins to one credit, and back to one coin, one credit. And that just basically means the amount of coins you need to put in in order to get one credit or X amount of credits, okay? Coins recycling, it's set to yes on mine, and that's because, let's say you have a setup for coin, and you drop four coins in, the coin recycling will give you the ability to play the same game uh, for those four coins, instead of going back to the, uh, the game list menu and having to start that game all over. So if that game, particular game has a continue feature, this will help you use that continue feature. Free play, which mine is set to yes, uh, is what it says. If you turn it to yes, you are on free play. So your coin mode doesn't matter. Your coin recycling also doesn't matter. So there you go. And if you want to set it on location, you just change free play to no. Uh, to save and get out of this, you're going to press the one player start. And then after this, you're going to press the A button. Now, coin counter, like I said, just shows how many coins have been put in. Press the A button or the 1 button to get out. Flipping the screen is also, like I said, it'll flip the screen upside down. 
Uh, the only reason this feature is here is so that if you mount a monitor and you put it in upside down an accident, don't want to help physically flip the monitor, you can just flip the screen itself. Now let's go back to service, the one we skipped. Uh, display mode. The reason why it started out number two is because technically you can't change that in here. It's overdriven or overridden by the dip switches on the PCB board that I showed you in the earlier part of the video. That's how you set it up from CGA to VGA. Uh, system mode, normal play. That means once we go into the game mode and if we happen to press the test button, we just come back to this main menu. Uh, but if we want to change our game list or our game difficulties, we have to change the system mode. Oops, I pressed the wrong button, guys. I'm sorry. Changing stuff on here is also the C, not the start button like I just did. So, anyway, changing system mode to config edit games. Uh, we're going to leave it on that. And when we leave this menu, uh, the moment we press the test button again, we're going to go into a sub-menu that lets us change the game list and the game difficulties. Now the game mode, as you can see it says all games, and if you change it, it goes to single game. The point of this is on all games like we have right now, that means every game that's available on the game board itself is available to play. If you change it to single game, you have to go into the sub-menu from the system mode and actually set a singular game that you want to play. So every time you fire up the system, instead of, instead of the game letting you choose what game you want to play, whatever game you have set, will play automatically and you won't be able to change that without going into this menu. We're going to keep it on all games though. Free browse, it's set to on. That gives the uh, person the ability to freely browse through the games before entering any credits. I only have this set to on just so if somebody changes it to coin game they don't have to worry about changing it. So it really doesn't matter when you're on free play. Stop timer, I have it set to on. What that means is it's stopping the timer. So when you're looking for a game, you don't have a countdown to select a specific game. Music is set to on, that's just your attract mode. So when nobody's playing the game, it has a little bit of background music that's playing. <coughs> Alright, now from here we're going to press the one player start to save these settings. Then we're going to press the A button. Then from here... We're going to go to exit, and once we go to exit, whether we're on the game list or any of that, once we press the test button, we're going to go into our sub-menu to adjust our game list. So let's go ahead and exit out of here. Alright, look at that, we're already in the sub-menu. So, this is the sub-menu I was talking about. I'm going to try and give you a little closer look at the three little options, so one sec. Alright, those are your three options right there. That's all you get. You get an exit to get out of here, you get an edit game list, and then edit game difficulty. Okay, so now that we're in here, you're going to use the uh, A button, or the number one button to enter. It's not the start button this time. So we're going to go into edit game list. And you can see this is our entire game list. All 752 games. Now, I know it's hard to see, so I'll try and zoom you in and just give you an idea. But you see how that game on the top, King of Fighters 2003, is, it says set. Now that set means that if I were to have the game as, or the game mode as a single game instead of all games, it would only play that game and not the other games. All right. So uh, next to each game, there's an asterisk. If the asterisk goes away, that means that game is not on the list anymore. So if you have the asterisk missing and you go back to the regular game mode, that will just be removed from the list in general. Of course, you use the joystick to move around, and the controls for this is your A button or your 1 button is show or hide. The B button shows all the games. The C button hides all the games. And the D button 
is the one you use to set a game. So if you didn't want King of Fighters 2003 as your set game, if you're doing a single mode game, and say you want King of Gladiators, you're going to come in and you're going to press the D button, and it'll change that to set. And that's going to make that your single game. Uh, we don't have to worry about that, obviously, because we have it set for all games. Now, if I wanted to hide or show a game, we just press the A button. So we're on SNK versus Capcom Plus. See how I press the A button? The asterisk went away. I don't know if you can see that very well. I apologize. But it came back because I pressed the button again on accident. But see? So, no asterisk. That means the game is out of the list. An asterisk, the game is in the list. If I press the B button, it's going to show all the games. If I press the C button, it erases all the games from the list. And you can go ahead and pick individual games to add to your list versus removing individual games. But we're going to press the B and show all the games. Alright, so now from here, you're just going to press the Start button. And the Start button is going to save and quit out of this menu. And then you'll press the A button to save and quit. Alright, now we're going to go down to Edit Game Difficulty. Now as you can see here, it's very similar to the previous screen where it has the entire list of all the games. Now, uh, on the controls list, A is how you can change individual difficulties for each individual game. B is how you can control the lives for each game. C, D, E and F is how you do a quick setup. Meaning, if you press C, all the games are going to be the hardest difficulty. D will be all hard, E will be all normal, and F will be all easy. So I'm going to just press F. And we're going to make them all just easy, okay? Now if I press the B button, and say I go into King of Fighters, nothing really changes. But you see how that number in the first time moves around? That's your difficulty. The number in the parentheses, those are your lives. And since I have everything set to easy, it's not going to change for me manually. But that's how you actually change your game settings, okay? Same thing, you're going to press the Start button to leave. And then you're going to press the A button to save all your changes. <laughs> There's a lot of games to go through and a lot of files and stuff, so it takes a minute for this entire save process to go through. There we go. Okay, now from here we're going to press the A button to exit. <coughs> As you can see, the game list has popped up. You can hear the uh, background music is playing. You notice in the lower right corner, the coin is set to free, and the timer is stuck on 60. Even if I move, the timer doesn't change. So that's what you want it set up for. Now, we're not done yet. I know this is weird because it's not like the other games. Uh, we need to now power it down, then power it back up, and then when it says press test to enter setup, we need to press the test at that point. So we're going to power it down, and then we'll power it right back up. Okay, now that we're back into the main menu here, we're going to want to go ahead and go back down to service. And then from configure games, press the C button back to normal play. And of course we have our game mode set to all games. And if I set it to single, like this is right here, and save it, then the game we put as our set is going to be the only game played. But we're going to keep it as all. Press 1 to start, or 1 player start to actually save. And then the A button to continue. Then we're going to go up to exit, and we're going to exit out. And there we are. Everything is all set up now.
it's on free play, our difficulties are set up, our game list is set up, our timer's turned off. You can go through and check out anything, like they even in Michael Jackson's Moonwalker. The lower left screen of each game shows you a mini demo of every game. I mean, it's a pretty cool little system. But that's basically it. That's how you set up a Game Elf 750 and 1. And like I've mentioned before, uh, it's the same thing as the 619 and 1. So, you can use the same manual. Alrighty guys, well I appreciate you watching. And there'll be a little bit of bonus at the end of this video. I'm going to show you the manual for the Game Elf 750 and 1. And if you want to, you can go ahead and pause and zoom in at any spot you happen to need to look at the manual. Otherwise, just go on Google and type in Game Elf 751 Manual, and it'll be one of the first options that come up. Have a good one, guys, and we'll see you later.